I watched Kyrie Irving. So I've been getting kind of obsessed with the uh, black Hebrew Israelites, the true Jews of the world, the true Jews. They're not even really Jews, though. They're, they say they're Jew, but they're not like Jewish. They're Israelites, right? And so Kyrie Irving got in trouble, or I guess he didn't get in trouble, but he's kind of in the, you know, in the news a bit for promoting this documentary titled, uh, where, where is, I don't even know where the title is. Oh, here we go. So the title of this movie is Hebrew to Negroes. Wake Up Black America. It is a documentary um, from 2018 that people were giving uh, Kyrie a bit of a hard time about because it was uh, it was anti-Semitic. And so I just, sometimes I get interested in things and I go, you know what, I'm going to check out this movie. It was three and a half hours. Three and a half hour documentary could have been probably an hour uh but i watched it because i was like so i will say this sometimes when people say something's anti-semitic i don't just you know i know a lot of jews will just be like yes it is it is and for me i go i'm i'm a free thinker you know i'm asking questions i'm just asking questions which is what a lot of people are who don't like jews say but uh I don't know if people saw it. There was a bunch of uh, people who went, well, again, like, so I have this joke that's, like, going pretty viral on Instagram right now, which is very weird because it's really the first viral thing I've ever had on Instagram where it's, like, I think last I checked it's at 700,000 views or something. And it's a joke I did in Raleigh. It was not even a joke in my act. It was straight up, like, all this Kanye stuff was going on. And so uh, we were in Raleigh. And so, you know, just, like, a little inside into comedy right now with the way that... All the apps are like trying to push organic reach. So a lot of comics, they'll just riff on some stuff in the news because you might get a good clip out of it. And then if you get a good clip out of it, like that's great. But it's not often that it'll be in the act. Like if you say, hey, you're like if you see me six months from now, you're like, hey, where's that joke? You're like, oh, that wasn't like a bit. It was just it's like a desk considered like a desk joke on uh, like the Daily Show or something, but funny. And so, anyways, so I do this joke. Uh, I'm sure some of you have seen it. It's on my Instagram. And it's uh, essentially the premise was, uh, you know, Kyrie Irving's talking all the shit, says that Jews run the banks. Next day, no bank says that uh, Jews run social media. Next day, social media. And then I say, I'm Jewish. And I'm just like, you know, this is uh, a lot. We should figure out a way to deal with him. Otherwise, I'm par- paraphrasing. I'm actually saying more words. And uh, just like because all the conspiracy people are going nuts. Anyways. So the thing goes viral. I'm literally at a bar hanging out with my friends on a Friday night, I believe. And literally, like, my friend Lev, Lev Fur, very funny comedian, he's like, look, he's like, my friends just shared your joke in my group chat, which I imagine most of his friends were Jews because he's Jew, right? But maybe not. But so anyways, this thing is, is going pretty viral, but it's like a lot of people... Who are like, so I'm getting it from every angle right now. I mean, again, it was just a joke. It was not, but you know, I guess sometimes jokes reveal the truth. But the problem is, so one, I was misinformed. I thought Jamie Dimon was a Jew because his name is Dimon, but it's not Dime. It's not, I, I kind of was like Dimon, but it used to be Diamond or something like along that lines because I'm, I'm a racist or whatever. And then, uh, so anyways, CEO of JP Morgan is not a Jew. And, uh, social media stuff. I said he got kicked off of social media. First off, Twitter, not a Jewish run social media. I mean, again, these are all public companies. That's another thing too. It's like, these are all for-profit public companies. And very often they just kind of operate in this realm of like, you know, safety first, you know, they're all make their money off of ads. Right. So it's like, it's really the advertisers who call the shots Jews. No, I don't know, but you know what I mean? Like, so anyways, there's things like going pretty viral The black Israelites loving it, right? So I have all the people who hate the Jews who are like, see? And then I feel like kind of dirty because I'm kind of carrying water for all these anti-Semites who are like, see, the Jew is is telling, like I'm Candace Owens right now with, uh, like I'm literally, I'm Candace Owens right now with the George Floyd thing where all the white people can see, hey, there's one of the, there's a good one of the good ones. You're one of the good ones, which a lot of people have said to me specifically. 
relate to this joke. But I was just like, it's just a joke, right? Because the joke is like all the conspiracy people are going nuts because this happened, right? Um, and so anyways, and like a lot of people, and then the people are all fighting in the comments. And then I was like, should I turn off the comments? And and then I just like updated the the thing, like the description to say like, because Kanye is back on Twitter, although I think he's back off of Instagram. It's so hard to keep track of this stuff. It's all over the place, right? Uh, but so, anyways, the whole the whole thing has been interesting because part of me is like, do I delete this? Do I just remove this? But I'm like, it's literally the only clip. But then part of me is like, well, you know, if these people are now following me, then I guess I could maybe spread some of my Zionist Zionist propaganda to them s- slowly over time to change their mind. But a lot of people don't like Jews. Um, I've, I've get, been getting really into it, by the way. A lot of people don't like Jews. You ain't changing their minds. Um, you're not. You're, you're not. I guess some people are minds not made up. I don't know. So anyways, weird thing. So anyways, I watched this documentary. Three and a half fucking hours. Hebrew to Negroes, Wake Up Black America. It is, first off, so I guess once it got, the, the big pop from the Kyrie Irving pop. And I mean, I think uh, there's a good chance Kanye West watched this as well because it seems to be informing him a bit. Uh, it's forty eight ninety nine this movie, to buy this on Amazon. If you go on Amazon right now, to rent, I think it's $11. It's on sale too, from forty nine ninety nine forty eight ninety nine dollars for a fucking three and a half hour piece of shit documentary that just belongs on YouTube. Like I'm telling you, this is a this has YouTube documentary for my first documentary written all over it. Okay. It's all over the place. It starts off like they're like in some guy's living room interviewing some like dude. There's the one thing is they interview this one guy who is like seems like a normal documentary. And then it's mostly just tons of stock photos. Like they must have spent a couple grand on stock photos unless they stole them or something. I don't know. Tons of stock photos and shit. Uh, but yeah, so I didn't obviously did not pay for it. I stole it. Um, I I could not do that to my Jewish brothers and sisters to pay for this, this movie. I had to steal it and I did steal it. Uh, it's on the pirate Bay. If you want to, if you want to check it out. Um, but it is honestly not a good movie. It's interesting. I will say interesting. So I I live tweeted watching it yesterday. So I'm just going to kind of go over my live tweets or my tweets if you missed it, because that's really um probably the best thing we'll do to do it. So yeah, so it's super long. Um and again, I was like is this actually an anti-semitic movie? Let's get down to the bottom of it. Let's find out. So, it starts off it's quoting uh has a quote from Henry Ford's The International Jew. The International Jew, you might also know as the name of my stand-up half hour that is on my YouTube page. So go check that out. Um it's not particularly uh not particularly nice to the Jews. He wasn't a big fan of the Jews, but so they they're going through it, and then um, they 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 start. He puts up these a lot of like just text on screen. It's really slow too. Like there's a lot of text on screen. It's really slow. It looks super amateurish. Uh, but it goes. So the Jews have established five major falsehoods, which work to conceal their nature and protect their status and power. To wit. The Jews are Israelites and thus God's chosen people. So the Jews do think they're the chosen people. I will say this. I've always found it obnoxious that Jews call themselves the chosen ones. From a very young age, I go, this chosen stuff, this is really inviting people to hate us. You know that, right? So uh, I've never liked that, but sure. Um, Number two, Jesus Christ was a Jew, which everybody thinks, but no, he wasn't a Jew. He was a black Israelite. That's the thing, right? They're like, there were no white people back then, which makes sense, right? Like, I will say, that there are some things where you go like, yeah, that's interesting. Like, they say how the Middle East, and they go, well, if there's a Middle East, and maybe there is an answer for this, and I'm just getting taken in, but they go, the Middle East, that's weird, because it's essentially Northern Africa. So the Northeast, most part of Africa. And they go, Middle East, why is there a term Middle East? There's no... Middle West or Middle North, Middle South. And I go, huh. All right. And then again, my, my, I will say this. My position on Israel is that it's basically just like a 51st American state. Like that is, 
you know that, that that is a property of other governments essentially it is its own government but a lot of governments have a pretty vested interest in having a you know a foothold there so that's kind of how i feel about israel is that they're just like that's that's a giant american military base that because america has interests that they would like to have someone there so number 3 uh, that six million Jews were killed in a Holocaust. They didn't say the Holocaust, so they're they don't like that the Jews call it the Holocaust. They go, hey, why do the Jews get to have the Holocaust? It was just a Holocaust, which I actually had a joke about in the International Jew, and that there have been many Holocausts, but the Jews, we have it as the Holocaust during World War II. Um, so again, you could see how uh, the the claims of anti-Semitism are. Generally, people don't love you challenging the um, Holocaust figures. And I will say this, okay? So I've told this story. I don't know if I've ever told this before here, but my ex-girlfriend, not Jewish, I went to her house um, on Christmas, like maybe five years ago or something, and her mom, her mom's father fought uh, during World War II. He was a Canadian soldier, and he liberated a concentration camp. And she, this is like Christmas Eve, and she goes, hey, you want to see something? And she grabs this book and she like pulls it out from like some, you know, hidden thing. And she grabs me this book and it was Mein Kampf. No, I'm kidding. So it was, um, it was like this, this book. So because he liberated this, uh, this concentration camp as one of the allies, they gave him this like commemorative book, like 10 years later. It wasn't like the next year. It was like eight or 10 years later, sometime in, I believe like maybe around 1950, 52, if I recall correctly, they go, hey, thanks for liberating the concentration camps. Here's this commemorative book. And she goes, you want to see it? And I go, okay, like, what am I going to say, right? And I'm looking through it. It's like very graphic, like dead bodies everywhere. I'm like, is this really Christmas Eve kind of material? And so I'm going through it and then I'm reading it. And at one point in that book, this is from 1952. It said that it was the number in that book was five million Jews. Okay, so that book said five million Jews. I hope I don't kick off of YouTube for this because this is <laughs> they would though, right? So, but it said five million Jews. But my contention on this whole thing is, you go say it's six million, say it's five million. Is that does that really change anything material? Like, obviously, if it's a hundred thousand versus six million, sure. But it's like the people who are like. Uh, you know, what's the what's the word here? Quibbling over a million Jews? I mean, there's a lot of people, a million, but, you know, I don't know what that changes. But so, uh, number four, that all races are equal or that all are brothers. I don't know if that's a thing Jews have, that it's a falsehood Jews have established because, again, that all races are equal or that all are brothers, that kind of goes in the face of the whole chosen people. I mean, again, uh, fully admit it is obnoxious but to call yourself the chosen people kind of says that we're not all equal here we're the chosen ones and the rest of you mud people okay um and then number five that the jews are just another religious group which we are uh kind of we are I, I, the funny thing is all the conspiracies and i'm just like man I, you know I, I like i was brought up around a lot of jews and it's pretty normal like it's one of those things where you know, it's like when you have your mind made up about some conspiracy and you find out that the actual story that they're telling us is the truth and you're just kind of like disappointed. I guess like I guess I'm the equivalent of someone who just like worked at NASA or like maybe I went to the moon and I go, yeah, I was on the moon. I don't know what to tell you. I know you wish this was a conspiracy, even though we obviously didn't go to the moon. But um, you know what I mean? Where I go, I, I don't know what to tell you. I've been around unless they're hiding it from all of us. It's like one of those things. So um, anyways. Moving on, uh, they start quoting, and so this is a big thing, and then this is the one where you go like, yeah, th I will call this, and, and maybe I'm like, you know, the whole, they talk about like the banality of, of evil and all this stuff or whatever, but, um, so they start quoting, because this is this considered, and I don't know if I'm just tolerate a, a certain amount of anti-Semitism, and maybe people, Jews, some Jews don't, and I just do, I don't know, but, uh, so this is like what I would consider garden variety anti-Semitism, but in in the uh, amount of it. But so they use this quote from, uh, they specifically say, Ashkenazi Jew Harold Wallace Rosenth Rosenthal. It was an interview that he gave 
1976 by Charles A. Weissman, published June 1992. So he says this. He goes, we are obliged to conceal our own particular character and mode of life so that we will be allowed to continue our existence as a parasite among the nations. Let me tell you, I've known a lot of Jews. They aren't just giving an interview and saying that. That is, they're not saying that period, but they're sure as shit not doing an interview and saying that. So this guy, which is like, this is so far-fetched. He was a senior aide to Senator Javits, New York Senator Javits in the 70s. He died in 1976 in a terrorist attack in Turkey. And then some guy named Walter White, who I assume is like, I don't know who Walter White is, but like, cool name, I guess. Breaking Bad. Says, I, so in 1978, this guy, Walter White, after this guy has now been dead for like 18 months, says, or two years or something, or 18 months, says, I did an interview with this guy two years ago. This guy, uh, Harold Wallace Rosenthal, this is the transcript. So no way for it to be refuted, denied. He just goes, and it was like passed out as some like anti-Semitic like pamphlet propaganda. So they're quoting this. And I will say about this whole documentary, another thing I took away these things did not need to be in here to prove like a lot of it is almost like um, like an anthropological uh, documentary where they go like, hey, like a lot of it was was interesting where I go like they go, hey, see, like uh, they go to Australia and and there's like the Aborigines, the black Aborigines in Australia in a cave somewhere in like Australia. They're using like what look to be like Hebrew letters and service. They have words that are similar Hebrew words to like their language and go, that's kind of fascinating. Yeah. I mean, I presume that everybody did start in Africa and kind of made their way out of there. Right. But so it, uh, it was weird. That was the one where you go like, yeah, okay. You're now making up like what's pretty well been debunked. It doesn't need to be in there. Like, it's almost like they want it to be like, they're, they are a little butthurt at the Jews that they they don't get to be considered the Jews. I can't even tell if they want to be Jews, though, or if they want to be the original Israelites from the Bible. I guess they do consider them themselves the Jews. But then at the end, of, and then it gets all into like um, a lot of stuff into slavery, right? This thing is so long, too. Like, I can't. And they do a lot of like the, a lot of like the really Bible y nonsense stuff, too, where they'll be like, this guy's. Like, here's the word for this. And then they'll say, like, here are, which is these four Hebrew letters. And then these four letters have their own meanings. And then they take this, like, crazy just gymnastics extrapolating uh, to say, like, this is what this conclusion is, right? Um, and again, I like conspiracies. Last week's episode was a fucking conspiracy episode or two weeks ago. I don't, I don't remember. But you know what I mean? Like, I'm into this shit. It's great, but they they <laughs> they kind of are like uh, they they took a few I, what I felt where they go like you didn't need these shots of the Jews in here and you could have still told the same story, but I guess the, I don't know and again I don't know what they want like what do you want do you want the Jews to be like all right you're right none of us are Jewish anymore you can have it like what like do they want all the keys to every synagogue I I don't really understand and then um. Here's the next quote from this guy from this uh, uh, Ashkenazi Jew, Harold Wallace Rosenthal. I love how they say Ashkenazi, like that matters. Like if it was a Sephardic Jew, you'd be like, oh, well, this, is this makes no sense. Um, he says, at first, by controlling the banking system, we were able to control corporation capital. Through this, we acquired total monopoly of the movie industry, the radio networks, and the newly developing television media. The printing industry, newspapers, periodicals, and technical journals had already fallen into our hands. <laughs> the richest plum was later to come when we took over the publication of all school materials. Through these vehicles, we could mold public opinion to suit our own purposes. There's no such thing as the silent majority because we control their cry and hue. The only thing that exists is an unthinkable majority and unthinking they will remain as long as their escape from our rigorous service is the opiate drug of the entertainment industry. By controlling... Doesn't this remind you of, like, Bond? Where the guy has Bond, like, tied up and he's about to kill him, like, with the laser, and then he goes, well, now that I got you tied up, I might as well tell you my whole grand scheme. What's it gonna matter? 
You're not going to tell anybody. You're dead. Like, that's, that is really these vibes where he goes, yeah, whatever. I'll just tell everybody. Who cares? No big deal. But so he says, by controlling industry, we've become the taskmasters and the people, the slaves. When the pressure of daily toil builds to an explosive degree, we have provided the safety valve of momentary pleasure. The television and movie industries furnish the necessary temporary distractions. These programs are carefully designed to appeal to the sensuous emotions, never to the logical thinking mind. Because of this, the people are programmed to respond according to our dictates, not according to reason. Silent they never are, thinking they will remain. We are amazed by the Christians' stupidity in receiving our teachings and propagating them as their own. So that's another thing. They're basically saying that Christianity has been um, co-opted by Judaism. Judaism is not only the teaching of the synagogue, but also the doctrine of every Christian church, and that's Christian church in parentheses, in America. Through our propaganda, the church has become our most avid supporter. This has even given us a special place in society. They're believing the lie that we are the chosen people and they the Gentiles. Ashkenazi Jew, Harold Wallace Rosenthal, Rosenthal, the Hidden Tyranny, 1976, The Silent Majority. So, and then here's the last one, because I, I, I'm running out of time here. But so they go, and then they get to the Hitler quotes. And you go, okay, probably Kyrie Irving, not the best look to be retweeting Hitler quotes. And I will say one thing too, because one thing that keeps getting mentioned over and over again with all the Kanye stuff is that you go, you say one bad thing about the Jews, that's it for you, right? They take all your shit away, right? But I can't help but remember not so long ago and happening right now that one, number one, Donald Sterling, former, he's a Jew, former owner of the Los Angeles Clippers, told his girlfriend in a whole bizarre thing, he goes, I don't want you bringing black people to my games, which is crazy because it's a fucking NBA basketball game, said that to her in private. She recorded it, released it, he was banned from the NBA for life and forced to sell his team. So I guess you could say, well, he got the money for the team. I don't know. But he was not like, hey, you could say whatever the fuck you want. And then, uh, oh, who's it? Ronald Sarver? Donald Sarver? Whoever the Sarver is. Sarver, dude. Uh, Phoenix Suns. He said the N-word. He's currently the owner of the Phoenix Suns. He said the N-word five times. In context. Not that that matters. Uh Especially when you own a fucking basketball team, you dummy. Anyways, he said that. Robert Sarver said that. Uh, and he was fined $10 million and he's now being forced uh, to sell the Phoenix Suns and his jewel, the Phoenix Mercury. Shout out to all the queens in the WNBA. So this is the Hitler quote, which is fake. It's not even a real quote. It's a made up Hitler quote that says, America has God's jewelry. The Americans have the jewels of God. The Americans have stolen God's precious jewels. What do you mean his precious jewels? The soldier asked. Hitler said, America has stolen the Jews, the jewels of God, his jewelry, the Negroes. They are the true Hebrews. What a foolish move and a direct challenge to God. And they plan on moving these false white Jews into a state of Israel. Because the white Jews know that the Negroes are the real children of Israel. And to keep America's secret, the Jews will blackmail America. They will extort America. Their plan for world domination won't work if the Negroes know who they are. And then it says, believed to be said by Adolf Hitler in a secret document before his death in an undisclosed location. That is fucking mental. First off, if you do not know for a fact that Adolf Hitler says this, do you really want to be throwing it into your documentary? So... Uh, <laughs> that was the thing. And you go, oh, wait, so Hitler loved black people? Because I remember a thing with Jesse Owens that's pretty famous where he pretty much did not like black people as well. It's not like, like I love this revisionist history of a fake Hitler quote where he now loves black people and just hates white Jews. Amazing. Great shit. So anyways, I give the movie overall uh, 8.2 out of 10. Uh, watch it if you want. Honestly... There is some interesting things in there. They they do have some things where they go like, it's interesting how they found like these like Mayan tribe, like all the Mayan tribes. They have words that are very similar to Hebrew. And I'm sure maybe a real anthropologist uh, has an explanation. I don't know. 